Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from AmandaCrochets.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make the baby burp cloth. The baby burp cloth is a simple and easy pattern to use and it is going to be very useful when you are holding your baby and want to throw something over your shoulder to protect your outfit. So I have two different versions here. It's the same pattern, just two different yarns that I used. One is 100% cotton and the other is a cotton blend. You can use any cotton yarn you would like, whether you use 100% cotton or a cotton blend like I did. I just wanted to show you what two different looks, what two different yarns look like. So for the baby burp cloth, you get a burp cloth that is 10 inches wide by 20 inches long. However, you can always change up the sizing of this if you wanted to make it a different size, whether you wanted to make it larger or smaller. This one is using 100% cotton yarn, and as you can see, it is very pretty and very textured. And then I used a cotton blend yarn, which again, you have all those pretty colors in. So you can do whatever you would like. And this is a very easy and beginner friendly pattern. So let's get started and I, and I will show you step by step all the materials as well as how to make this burp cloth step by step. So let's get started. So for today's tutorial you're going to need some cotton yarn. You can use any cotton yarn that you would like. However, these are just the two cotton yarns that I wanted to try out since they were new to me. So let's look at this one first. This is the Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes. And these are exclusive to Michaels and Michaels stores online. And the color I'm going to be using is Breezy Blue. This is classified as a number three lightweight yarn. And they recommend a US size six or four millimeter knitting needle. And for the crocheters, they recommend a US G6 or four millimeter crochet hook. This is 100% cotton and it's machine washable and dryable which is great because if you're using this as a burp cloth, this will definitely come in handy when you need to just throw it in the washer and dryer. And this is an 8.5 ounce cake or 240 grams. It's 491 yards or 449 meters. And this is part of their soft summer stripes collection. This is a limited time only yarn. I'm not sure if they have it in stores anymore. It might just be on clearance right now or on the website. So I would definitely pick some of this yarn up if you're interested in trying this out. But again, you can use any cotton yarn that you would like. So again, this is the Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes. And then the other cotton yarn I used was the Karen Cotton Angel Cakes. This is very similar to the Karen Cotton yarn that was out before. You can still get that in stores. You might just not be able to get this variegated color. And this one is considered a number four worsted weight medium weight yarn. They recommend a needle size as a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter. And the recommended hook size is a US H8 or 5 millimeter crochet hook. Again, this is machine washable and dryable. And this one is 60% cotton and 40% acrylic. Again, it's part of their soft summer stripes collection, so it is a limited time only yarn. And this is an 8.8 .8 ounce cake or 250 grams. It's 530 yards or 485 meters. Now for both of these cakes, you could probably get two burp cloths out of these cakes depending on how big you want to make it. If you're going to be making it the same size that I'm going to be making mine today, then only one cake is needed and you can definitely make two out of the one cake as I mentioned. So for the crochet hook that I'm using, I'm using an H 5 millimeter crochet hook. So starting with the cotton ripple cakes, you're going to need to make a chain of 42. Now if you wanted to change the sizing of your burp cloth, 
and wanted to make it a different size, whether a little bit smaller or a little bit larger, I'm using the sedge stitch. So all you need to do is make your chain in multiples of three. So again, I'm making a chain of 42, and if you wanted to change up the sizing, you just need to make a chain that is a multiple of three. So to make a chain, you're gonna do yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So continue making a chain until you have a total of 42 chains or your desired width. Okay, once you have your 42 chains, you're going to begin row one. So for row one, you're going to work into the third chain from your hook and you're gonna make one half double crochet and one double crochet into that same stitch. So to count three chains from your hook, you're going to skip the loop on your hook as that's not going to count. You're gonna count three chains. So one, two, and three. And in that third chain, you're gonna make a half double crochet. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now if you're a beginner and you want to know where your edges are, I strongly suggest putting a stitch marker into this very first stitch so that way you know where the first stitch of your row is. Next you're going to make a double crochet into that same chain. So again, yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, two loops remain, yarn over, pull through the remaining two loops on your hook. So that completes your first stitch. Next, you're going to skip two chains and you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all into that same stitch. So skip two chains, so one and two, and then chain after that, you're going to make a single crochet. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. Next, make a half double crochet. So yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and finally a double crochet. Yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And this is the start of your repeat. So you're going to skip the next two chains. And in the chain after that, you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all into that next stitch. And you will do this until you have three stitches left on your hook or in your in your row. So again, skip two chains. And in the chain after that, make a single crochet. a half double crochet, and a double crochet. And that is the sedge stitch. It's one of my favorite stitches. It's very pretty, and I really like the look of it a lot. Okay, skip the next two, and in the chain after that, again, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet all into that same chain space. Okay, so you're just gonna repeat this all the way down until you have three chains remaining, and then I will show you how to move on to row two. So I have three chains left of my row. So to finish row one, you're gonna skip two chains, and in that very last chain, you're just going to make a single crochet. So this is what row one will look like. So 
So to move on to row two, you're just going to chain one and turn. And again, remember to put your stitch marker in the very first and the very last stitch of each row. And as you complete more rows, you're going to just move your stitch marker up a little bit more. Okay, so for row two, you're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet into the very first stitch. And for this pattern, that chain one is going to count as your first stitch. So that is where you're going to put your single crochet or your stitch marker in. So the very first stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet and a double crochet. And again, that chain one which is right over here is going to count as your first single crochet and that is where you are going to put your stitch marker. Now we're just going to repeat this pattern pretty much the same way that we did for, from the previous row is you're going to skip two chains, or you're going to skip two stitches and you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. So you're going to skip the next two stitches, which is the double crochet and the half double crochet from the previous row. And then if you see right here, this is a single crochet. So you're always going to work in these single crochets and skip over the double and half double crochets. So you're going to skip two stitches right here, go in that single crochet stitch and make a single crochet half double crochet and double crochet all into that same single crochet stitch. Again, skip the next two stitches in the stitch after that, make a single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet. And what you're actually doing is you're kind of offsetting the stitches a little bit so that's what forms that beautiful texture to it. So again you're just going to repeat this until the end of your row. So you're going to skip the next two stitches and then the stitch after that make a single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet all into that same stitch. And you will do this until you have three stitches remaining and by three stitches I mean you have your double crochet, half double crochet and then that skipped stitch that you have at the beginning. So again just repeat this all the way across by skipping the next two chains and in the chain after that, I'm sorry the stitch after that which is your single crochet stitch you're going to make a single half double and double crochet. So I'll show you one more time. Skip this stitch and this stitch which, which is your double crochet in your half double crochet and right here in the stitch after that you're going to make a half double single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet. So you're always working in the single crochet stitches from the previous row. So repeat that until you get to the end of your row and I will show you how to move on to row three. Okay so when you get to the end again you have three stitches remaining so you have that double crochet, half double crochet and you have that skipped those skipped chains at the beginning which counts as a single crochet so it might be a little difficult to see but you're gonna skip this stitch, this stitch and right here in that chain that's when you're gonna that's where you're gonna go so you're gonna go right into that chain and you're gonna make a single crochet to end your row and again place that stitch marker in the very last stitch of your row and this is what two rows look like so to move on to row three you're simply gonna chain one and turn Again, that chain one is going to count as your single crochet stitch 
and you're going to make a half double crochet and double crochet to that very first stitch. Then you're going to skip the next two stitches, which again is the double crochet and the half double crochet from the previous row. And you're going to go right into that next stitch, which is your single crochet. And you're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. Skip the next two stitches, and then a stitch after that. You're going to make a single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. And again, you will repeat this for the entire length of your burp cloth. So for my burp cloth, I ended up making 60 rows in order to get 20 inches. However, if you wanted to make it a little bit longer, you can certainly do that. You can make it a little bit smaller as well. You don't have to make exactly 60 rows because your gauge might be a little bit different than mine, but I approximately did about 60 rows in order to get about 20 inches long. So just continue with your burp cloth and continue with that row 2 repeat row until you get your 20 inches or your desired width. And then I will meet back up with you and show you how to move on to making the simple border. Okay, so I have a different yarn here, which is the Karen Cotton Angel Cakes. And I have about 20 inches long. So we're just going to go ahead and move on to the border. So for the border, you're just going to simply chain up one and turn your work. And for the border, I wanted to keep it simple, so I did my traditional border that I usually do for projects. And I just went ahead and made a single crochet border. So for the border, you're going to insert your hook into that very first stitch and make a single crochet. And you're going to make one single crochet into each of the stitches across the top of your burp cloth. If you wanted to make a different border, you can certainly do that. Or if you wanted to not make any kind of border, you can do that as well. I just thought that with this pattern, having a single crochet border kind of made everything very nice looking and even. And really gave it that finished look. So again, just one single crochet in each of these stitches across the top of your burp cloth. Okay, so I'm coming up to my first corner and with each corner stitch, you're going to make three single crochets into that corner and that just helps to round out the corner nicely before moving along the side of your burp cloth. So then when you move along the side, all you want to do is just make one single crochet across as neatly as you can. And I usually find those last stitches right here. And I just insert my hook into those and continue making a single crochet. So essentially it's you're going into that chain one space along the sides of your burp cloth. And this will be the same for the other side. So again, you're just going to find that chain one and you're just going to go right into that chain one and make your single crochet border. So you're going to repeat this all the way down along the edge. When you get to that next corner, you're going to make three single crochets into that corner. When you get to the bottom of your burp, burp cloth, you're going to make one single crochet across 
make three single crochets into that next corner space and again one single crochet along the other side of your burp cloth and then I will show you how to end with the border and I will show you the finished product. So again just make one single crochet in each stitch across and when you get to each corner you're simply going to make three single crochets in each of the three corners as I, as I mentioned. I will show you how to finish the last corner when we get back. Okay, so I finished the border and I'm at the very beginning. Remember we put one single crochet into that very first stitch. So to finish your final corner, all you're simply going to do is make two single crochets. You're going to find that first single crochet and you're just going to slip stitch the two together and then you're going to cut your yarn making sure to leave a little bit for a little bit of a tail so you can weave that in and then yarn over your hook and pull through and tighten. And that completes your burp cloth. So with the cotton angel cakes you can see the different variants of colors used throughout and then if you look at the cotton ripple cakes you can see you have a little bit of that texture to it both are very soft and both fit perfectly over your shoulder so when you are burping your baby you have this to protect your shirt and you can again just throw this in the washer and dryer and it will come out looking brand new. So thank you so much for joining me today on how to make the baby burp cloth. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and give this pattern a try. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting. Bye.